Konnichiwa, Asenpai desu. Have you ever wondered why your drawing looks like it was colored by a toddler? No, I'm not calling you a man chow or a woman chow. What I'm saying is, your drawing is equivalent to a one year old's. Boom, roasted. Don't worry, my chow. I'll feed you enough coloring knowledge today just so you can become a fully functional adult. Today, I'll be teaching you Kuhai's the fundamental theories of lighting and coloring. Learning how to color and shade is an essential skill for any beginner artist. When it comes to coloring and shading, it's important to understand the different theories of light such as element of light and directional lighting in order to create a realistic illustration. Furthermore, understanding different tones and hues can help to develop a more accurate sense of color representation. Are these drawing mumbo jumbos too confusing for you? Well, don't worry, because I'll be your art nanny today, and I'll be holding your tiny baby hand throughout this entire video. Introducing 5 Steps to Master the Core Principles of Light and Coloring by Gaten Sensei from Coloso. Gaten Sensei has worked for about 11 years as a concept artist. She has previously worked on NC Soft's Blade and Soul and Neopo's Dungeon and Fighter teams. Right now, she is a freelance artist and an art instructor. Light and coloring has always been her strong suit, and I can't wait to share with you Kuhai's her secret techniques on color theory, 5 steps coloring, and understanding how different kinds of light can create different atmospheres. Alright, let's jump straight into it, shall we? Light plays an important role in the world around us. It helps us to identify different colors and shades, making it easier for us to understand the surrounding environment. In general, light can be broken down into three main elements which are hue, saturation, and brightness. Hue is the element that allows us to perceive dominant colors such as red, yellow, blue, etc. Saturation is how intense or pure a certain color appears in that same hue. You can understand this concept as how many grays have been incorporated into a certain color. Brightness determines how much of that light is present in a certain space or area, or how many whites have been blended into the color. Knowing these three elements of light can help us create unique coloring designs. Have you ever wondered why some colors look better with a certain color? Or why does your favorite shirt and pants just seem to go together? It's because of basic color theory. Basic color theory is the science and art of using color to produce a synergized visual appeal. We all know the primary colors are red, blue, and yellow, and we can create a variety of colors just by mixing these three primary colors. But to achieve basic color theory, we are only going to look at analogous and complementary color schemes since these are the two most frequently used color schemes in anime art. For analogous color schemes, you first pick a main color, then pick colors that are located on both sides of the selected color in the hue circle. In this case, the selected colors will be orange and purple. This color combination will never go wrong. Take Kuta as an example. The character uses red as the main color. You can see how colors such as orange and purple were included in her design as well. Next, let's talk about complementary color scheme, which is my favorite. Complementary colors are colors that are opposite each other on the color wheel. The most common complementary color pairs include red and green, blue and orange, yellow and purple. When placed next to each other, they create a strong contrast and can enhance each other's vibrancy. But based on my experience, red complements blue better than green. But hey, just take it with a pinch of salt. You can decide for yourself. You also need to understand how different colors evoke different emotions and create different moods. Cool colors such as blue and green are often used to portray a calm atmosphere, while warm colors like yellow and red evoke feelings of energy and excitement. I have made a fairly robust video that covered all the necessary color theories. I will link it up here. Be sure to check it out. So you know how colors work now, but how do you select color for light shadows? The answer is contrast. The difference between base tones and light shadows can make or break an image. You can't pick a color that is too light for light shadows because that won't produce an impactful contrast. Ideally, basic tones and shadows should be clearly distinguished. Here, Daten Sensei shows her trick for consistently choosing the perfect shade of light shadow. Firstly, move your hue bar slightly. Just a bit though. Then, move your eyedropper to the bottom left corner. As for how far you want to move your dropper, it depends on your preference. And ta-da! Here you go. The perfect shade for your base tone. The logic behind this is that you want to pick a shade that has a slightly different hue because it can enrich the image by making it appear more vibrant and lifelike. Besides, shadows are not always pure black. They can have a subtle color cast depending on the lighting conditions and the translucency of the objects. So you've learned how to pick a shade that has a slightly different hue from the basic tone. But how do we implement this into our coloring process? For two-tone shading. Basically, you shade an object with two different darkness of a single color to enhance depth and volume. After you are done, smooth out the base and mid-tones when coloring. 
Gavin Sensei recommends adding some color to the mid-tones here. As for which color you should use for the additional tone, it's recommended to use warm tones such as yellow, orange, and red. For a color like blue, it acts as a complementary color to the additional tone and this enhances the color dynamics. Here are some of the examples you can apply on an object. One small thing to take note of is to control the intensity of the additional tone so it doesn't get too strong. Also, be careful when using cool colors as an additional tone, it'll change the color of lighting. The moment you kohais have been waiting for. The moment of truth. Give us the goddamn recipe already. Alright, alright. Stop rushing me, jeez. Here we go. Oh, before the final reveal, I just want to inform you guys that the steps do not include coloring the base tone. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Or else it will be 6 steps instead, not 5. Oh my god, stop talking! I will use this cylinder as an example. The first step is to apply two-tone shading. The two shades can be applied to different areas of the object or figure to create areas of light and shadow, which in turn adds contrast and realism to the image. Then, create an additional tone called the mid-tone. Using warm tones such as red can help to make the object appear more vibrant and lifelike. Next, create a dark tone. The use of dark tones is to further express the contrast, depth, and the three-dimensionality of the cylinder. After that, create a bright tone. A bright tone refers to a color value that is significantly lighter and more intense than the surrounding colors. In other words, the complete opposite of a dark tone. Reflected light refers to the light that bounces off surfaces and affects the appearance of nearby objects. By adding reflected light to your cylinder, it can help to create a more natural and dynamic look. It can also help to add depth and dimensionality to a drawing. This 5 steps coloring technique can be applied to any object you want to draw such as hair, legs, posterior legs, slacks, jeans, school uniform skirt, long skirt, jacket, etc. Instead of searching how to shade clothes, how to shade hair, top 5 shading tips on YouTube, I suggest you kuhais to sit down, take your time and study these 5 basic steps properly once and for all. One word of advice, this 5 steps of shading is not the red pill you're looking for to master coloring and shading within a day or two. You have to first understand the underlying fundamentals. As the GOAT once said, get the fundamentals down and the level of everything you do will rise. Well, I'm down bad and my pee pee is rising. Also known as the Rembrandt lighting. The Rembrandt lighting consists of a single light source placed on a 45 degree offset from the subject, about 5 feet away. The Rembrandt lighting is often used in portrait art because it creates a strong and dramatic lighting effect that adds depth, dimensionality, and character to the subject. Frontal lighting is a lighting technique where the light source is placed directly in front of the subject, shining straight onto the subject's face. This lighting technique makes a person look flat and soft. Side lighting is a lighting technique where the light source is placed at the side of the subject. This lighting technique will create a dramatic and narrative atmosphere. Bottom lighting is a lighting technique where the light source is placed at the bottom of the subject. It is often used to create a sense of horror and thus it is commonly used in horror movies. Backlight refers to a lighting technique where the main light source is positioned behind the subject, shining towards the camera. There are two types of backlight. Backlight with front weak supplementary lighting and backlight without supplementary lighting. The former creates a more balanced lighting effect with less contrast, while the latter creates a more dramatic lighting effect with strong contrast. Deciding on the type of lighting and drawing is important because it helps to establish the overall mood and atmosphere of a scene, as well as the spatial relationships between objects. On top of those, lighting has a great influence on the appearance of color, depth, and form of a drawing. Choosing the light source is typically done before selecting the color. That is why two-tone shading is so useful because the two shades can create areas of light and shadow, making the whole coloring process 10 times easier. The 5 steps to master the core principles of light and coloring course will provide you Kuhai's a comprehensive understanding of the fundamental principles of lighting and coloring in art and illustration. Oh, did I also mention that Gatton Sensei also covers the basics like anatomy and perspective in her class. If you're interested, click the link below to sign up. Feel free to support me on Patreon, I really appreciate it. Please drop a like, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on Twitter. DM me if you want a commission from me. Alright, that's all from me. Jana, Kuhais.